The House of Houses by Nick Vrakar. Eddie had waited until his parents were asleep, waited for the doors to close, for the lights to turn off, until he could safely sneak away. He took his backpack and packed some clothes, some food, and a flashlight. He dropped his keys on his desk and slipped out into the night. The air was cool and crisp, with a slight breeze that nipped at his neck. He didn't look back at his home, not until he was too far away to see it, not until it was hidden behind other homes in the neighborhood. He didn't have a direction in mind. The suburban homes of his little town gave way to the businesses and then to highway and forest. He felt the first drops long after his hometown disappeared from the horizon, but it wasn't long before those drops turned to rain and that rain turned into a storm. He hadn't packed a jacket, and in his rush he had left his cell phone behind. He walked until his clothes and his shoes and the cuffs of his jeans were soaked. He walked slowly, clutching his arms across his chest. He looked back down the road from where he came, but carried onward, shivering with each step. There was a driveway on the side of the road, but he didn't notice it until he was standing in the center of it. There was a single stone mailbox at the end of the driveway. Mail spilled out of the mailbox onto the dirt. He looked down the driveway and saw the path winding up and into the forest. There was a wide gate, but he couldn't see any house from the road. Eddie walked up the driveway slowly. The gates were locked by a chain, but the bars were wide enough for him to pass through. He took off his backpack and slipped through the bars, pulling his backpack after him. He followed the path up the hill, and there, at the top of the hill, he saw the mansion. A short set of concrete steps led up to the front doors. The walls were a gray brick covered in strands of vines and vegetation that spread up to the roof, past the third-story windows, in thin tendrils. The sides of the mansion stretched out into the forest, hidden behind the tall trees. He climbed up the steps to the front doors. There was a worn brass knocker, the shape of a horseshoe, built into the door on the right, just above his shoulder. He reached up, pulled it back, and swung it against the door. The slam was louder than he was expecting, even against the storm, but no one answered. He tried again, and again, and again. Eddie looked back down the road and back at the door. He tried the doorknob, and it twisted in his hand with ease. The hinges strained and whined as he pulled the door open. He looked into the darkened interior. He pulled out his flashlight, stepped inside, and closed the door behind him. He clicked on the flashlight and looked around. There were paintings and portraits, dusty and covered in forgotten webs. There was a portrait of a young man standing in a grove. He was leaning against the handle of a shovel. There was another painting of a young woman in a pink dress, spinning. The hem of her dress drifted up to her ankles. There was a painting of the mansion on a sunny day, sitting in the center of a bright clearing. There was a line of neatly pruned shrubs along the sides. There were shelves and bookcases that lined the walls. The books looked untouched, with multiple layers of dust. There was a small pile of notebooks discarded on the floor in front of the bookshelf. He passed the beam of the flashlight across the door that led into a dining room, passed the curved staircase that led to a second floor and stopped when he saw the two-story house built into the back of the hall. It was a seemingly ordinary house, nestled in between the curved staircases, occupying the back half of the entrance hall, projecting back into the rooms beyond. It was two stories tall, built with red brick and a brown angled roof that was barely visible just below the ceiling. A short porch with a narrow set of steps led down to the wide red and gold carpet set on the floor of the center of the hall. A wooden mailbox was built into the porch rail, its flap open, the box empty. Eddie climbed up the porch stairs and walked over to the window beside the front door. He pressed his flashlight against the window and tried to look inside, but the blinds were closed. He knocked on the door, but there was no answer. He could still hear the storm outside, the rain falling harder than before. He reached for the doorknob, pulled the door open, and stepped inside. The entrance to the house was a cramped and narrow hall that led into a wide room. A staircase on the left wrapped around itself as it led up to the second floor. A pair of old shoes were set beside a welcome mat, discarded and dusty. There were framed photographs hung up along the wall. There was a photo of the mansion at night, a single light on in an upper room. 
There was a photo of a middle-aged man sitting in a tall, ornate chair. He held a stern glare to the camera. Inside the wide room, there was a sitting arrangement of chairs around a table. Through the window, he could see what might have been another sitting room, inside the mansion and outside the house. Its chairs covered with garbage bags. Multiple notebooks were tossed on the garbage, others gathered in piles in the room, leading up to a small wooden shack. Beneath the door frame, the light from inside the shack shone through. Eddie stepped up to the shack slowly. He raised his hand to knock on the door, but held back and listened. On the inside of the shack, he could hear a rocking noise, light thumps, a scratching, like pen against paper. He held his breath and tapped his fist against the door. The thumping, the rocking, and the scratching stopped. Something slid, dragged against the floor. A footstep, another footstep. The door pulled open. An old man was looking out from behind the door. He looked at Eddie and around the room behind him. Are you alone? Are you here for money? I was assured that all of my debts have been paid for quite some time. Who are you? I'm Eddie. The old man shut the door. He unbolted the lock and pulled the door back open, wide enough for Eddie to step inside. There was little room on the inside of the shack. In one corner there was a cot leaned up against the wall, in another a toilet and a sink. There was a wooden desk surrounded by stacks of notebooks. A wooden chair was pulled away from the desk and was turned to face the cot. A hatch on the floor was closed. The old man sat down on the cot and motioned to the chair at the desk. Go on, sit down. I don't get many visitors, you see. Eddie sat down and nervously glanced around the room. You look dreadful. Was it raining outside? I can't seem to tell so much while in here. The sound of the rain doesn't quite make it this far in. Are you hungry? I've canned beans, canned peaches, canned fish, canned potatoes. I'm well stocked. What do you do here? The old man motioned to his notebooks. My magnum opus, the triumph of my career, my life. I had to get away from the city to focus on that. There was a notebook that was laid on the center of the desk. The notebook was open, and there was a pen set on the blank page. Eddie reached for the notebook and pushed the pen aside. The old man shouted, Don't touch that! He jumped up from his cot. Eddie flinched and fell back into the desk. The notebooks fell off of the desk and spilled onto the floor. Everything was perfect. Everything was in its place. Everything was exactly in the order it was supposed to be. At last, you don't know how long it will take me to fix it, to put everything back in order, to set everything straight. I can't continue my work until everything is in order, until everything is... Perfect! This time it'll all be perfect. Every word in the right spot, every sentence in the right order. I'm sorry, I can fix it. Get out! Get out, get out, get out! Eddie gripped the strap of his backpack and stepped out of the shack. The old man slammed the door shut. Eddie turned his flashlight back on and walked away from the shack. He swept the beam over the discarded notebooks in the corner and passed them by. He walked quickly, down the hallway and out the door of the house. In the dim dawn's light, he could see the pile of notebooks they had walked by before. There were more piles than he had noticed, pushed against the wall. He stepped out of the mansion. Outside the storm had calmed and the rain had stopped. It was a slow walk down the path to the road, then back to his little town, back to his neighborhood, back to his house. By the time he got home, the sun was back up. He searched his pockets by habit for his keys, but they were where he left them, in his room on the desk. He took a deep breath and rang the doorbell. His heart beat heavy in his chest and his shoulders slumped under the weight of the backpack. He waited, and he waited, and then the door began to open. The End